everybody. So uh, we're getting this one in just under the wire. Welcome to our uh, monthly uh, cocktail of the month. Wait, are we not going yet? I don't know. I can't tell. I can't tell either. There we hey, go. Hey, there we go. Okay. Wow, you missed my excellent introduction, in which case I solved all the world's problems. So we'll start over. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our uh, Tiny Sustainable Cocktail of the Month. Yes. And this month, uh, we're getting it in just under the wire. Yes. Um, but today, we're going to be uh, covering the Manhattan, a classic cocktail. A classic cocktail. Or so I've been told. Mm -hmm. So we're, there are actually three different versions because we're uh, kind of, we were thinking early on we'd, we'd actually go ahead and uh, and get to, are we on? It says live zero, zero. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully it's, hopefully it's working. <laughs> so... I didn't see it going. It oh. does say live, doesn't it? It does say live. Okay, well, we hope this works out for us. Anyway, sorry about all that. So um, there are actually three different kinds we're covering tonight. We're covering the uh, drive Manhattan, right? Or yeah. Is that what they call it, the drive? Yeah. Using a dry vermouth and then a sweet Manhattan and then what they call the ultimate Manhattan. Perfect. Perfect Manhattan. See, I know nothing about what we're doing. Are what? we? Are we? Oh, Yay. Okay, that lets us know. Okay, good. So so yeah. we are live. Thanks, oh. Aaron. Thanks for the heads up because we really couldn't tell. Right. There you go. Cool. Okay. All right. So, all right. So what we did, um, because uh, we don't want to bore you completely, although we've had requests to make things on air. So tonight. Oh, you, you, history. The oh, whole... we're, okay, we're going to do that. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say in front of us, why don't you go ahead and no, give no, me the history. No, no, no. no, no. Well, I was just going to say we pre-mixed. Oh, yes. The, the sweet and the dry. And oh, we, it says, give us a minute to get everyone here. Okay. Well, we can wait. I, I don't know what that means. I, I don't either. Oh, hey, there's Tad. Hey, Tad. Oh, hi, Tad. So, so uh, what should we chat about? We're waiting for Erin to gather her clams. I don't know. Okay. Well, maybe you can give them the history. Oh, I know what we can talk about. It's been raining all month in the uh, Tiny Sustainable Homestead. So we have not gotten quite as much done uh, as we would like on our outdoor projects. Today, however, the Mad Farmer and Miss Mercy were able to pick up a bird bath that was gifted to us for some, from some folks who moved, and we finally have a day of sun, so we got quite a bit done. Worked on some outdoors uh, flower boxes that are going in the front, and so, all right, I think, ah, there we go. Now we're counting. Okay. All right. So, uh, so yeah, so this was a really, this was a really good day, actually, as far as the, the Homestead Outdoor Projects went. So, um, all right, I think we can get back to what we've got in front of us now. Okay, so uh, what we have in front is we have a... Um, here we'll... There you go. There you go. Uh, this one over here is made is the dry. It's the dry. Made with dry vermouth. Mm -hmm. And this one is made with sweet vermouth. Now, we have not actually ever had a Manhattan, uh, each of us, uh, before. So what we've decided to do is we're going to taste test these before we go on to make the perfect Manhattan mm -hmm. on screen. Mm -hmm. So to do that, we have a newly minted coin which we're going to flip to see who gets to, to try which one. All right. So um, before we get to taste testing, the dry Manhattan, both of the Manhattans have the, we use the Sazerac rye whiskey. And so they both are going to have that a shot of sweet or dry vermouth, Angostura bitters, a couple of dashes of those. And then as you can see, the dry is garnished with the lemon peel. The uh, sweet is garnished with the cherry. And I'm super excited. You'll see when we get to the Manhattan that we got some really yummy. Hi, Kristen. We got some really yummy um, cherries. cherries, maraschino cherries that I had wanted to have for our Mary Pickfords that we did a couple of months ago. So now coin flipping and taste testing. All right. So which, which, would you, which one would you like? to designate as a heads and, and which one tails or do you just want to I'll go I'm gonna I'm gonna I want the sweet so I'm gonna say head sweet okay so if it's heads you know what it's tails it's definitely tails but, so I but, get the no, dry no, 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 no. No, but, it's all, but, it's okay. uh, no, I love Miss Mercy. Okay. So she said, no, you said you had a preference. So here you go. You're going to try that. Oh, that's so sweet, baby. Thank you. You're welcome. Because I like to stay married. So. Okay. So this is, now we will be making, there were, since there were three of them, we're only going to be making the perfect. I've got all this stuff for it here. So we just wanted to taste test these. So, okay, we did that once. Oh, and these glasses you can see here is a, you can kind of see, I'll see if I can get a little close. They have this lovely art deco design on them. 
They are courtesy of Erin McGinnis. She had them. That's a, a cocktail glass is the preferred glass for making these. And I do have a little bit of history. So while we're while we're taste testing, I'll give you a bit of history. Mm, swap. You can certainly taste the uh, rye. Yes. In that. And it's lovely. It is lovely. Mm -hmm. It's not as good as the black seal of rum, I don't think. But, All right. But. I mean, it's, it's lovely. Mm. Okay. I like them both. I do like them both. Mm -hmm. uh, we can just keep swapping if you want. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Okay. But let's talk a little bit about the history. So when I when we went to kind of try to find what type of cocktails we wanted to do, we were hoping to find things that had good origin stories. I've kind of been a big fan of the origin stories. And so if you've watched anything, you know that I didn't think that the Amaretto Sour had a very good origin story. The Manhattan, well, it really was very good. The Manhattan actually has a great origin story. It's been around a really long time. And so one of the things that we're going to do, we also share this video at our Tiny Sustainable Life um, site. And so when we do that, we're going to have some show notes about the things that I use to kind of get some of this history. But the first time it's kind of mentioned is in 1882 in a newspaper article. And then you can find it in the Modern Bartender, Bartender's Guide or Fancy Drinks and How to Mix Them by O.H. Byron. The cool thing That's about not Lloyd Byron, the poet, is it? No. Okay. Just the checking. cool thing about this book, it came out in 1884, and on page 21, they have uh, two versions of the cocktail. The first one is one pony of French vermouth, half a pony of whiskey, three or four dashes of the Angostura bitters, and three dashes of gum syrup. The second option for the Manhattan was two dashes of Curacao. Curacao. We we learned. You I, learned how to say that. You, you learned how. I, I immediately forgot it. Curacao. Well, yeah. You can look it Curaso. up. Curacao. Maybe you can Curaso. use Curacao. 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 Okay. Uh, two dashes of Angostura bitters and a wine glass, half a wine glass of whiskey and half of Italian vermouth. You stir it and strain it into a cocktail glass. Uh, so those were the couple of early editions of this, but it also has shown up in a couple of other books, The Flowing Bowl by William Schmidt and The Bartender's Manual by Harry Johnson in 1900, and The Flowing Bowl came out in 1891. So this recipe has been around a long time. The previous recipes had absinthe and gum syrup, which I really didn't actually even know what gum syrup was, so I had to do a little hunt for that. It's gum Arabic made from the acacia tree, and it's kind of a resin that's turned into a powder, and then you mix it, and it makes a syrup. So it's, probably not grown in Kansas. It's a thing. No, it's not. It's uh, made over in the Middle East okay. from a very particular tree. Sure. So, Oh, and both of the recipes call for absinthe, and we don't have any of that yet, but it's on the list. Mm -hmm. And then um, the... One story was that uh, it was, this is the, the sort of story that's not as true, that Lady Churchill in 1894, she created this drink for a celebratory banquet for Samuel Jones Tilden, a gubernatorial candidate in New York. But that one has been shown to be not true because she was giving birth to Winston Churchill. So that's probably a name you recognize. And so that's my favorite story. But um, its true beginnings are probably lost to time. One of the stories said that uh, it was a bartender who kind of lived on Manhattan, in Manhattan, that came up with it. Um, so the varieties, the cocktail recipes that we're using tonight, we got from cocktails, tastecocktails.com. And they offer these three varieties. And so we're going we're gonna to go ahead and make the perfect. But this was probably one of my more favorite ones to research just because they, it had so much interesting stuff about it. And if you go, we'll have this in the show links too. You can actually find the modern cocktail guidebook from um, Byron online, all online. It's so cool. So that was really fun to look. We'll definitely add a link to that. Yeah, for yeah, sure. As you can tell, I do almost no research, but I do a lot of taste testing. So <laughs> just, just to make that clear, and I'm happy to do that. And it's now very odd, but we uh, now enjoy a trip to the liquor store mm. for uh, different kinds of uh different liquors yep almost as much as i used to enjoy going to toys r us so i got nothing yeah well you know or a garden store for okay you, for you so okay. now the perfect okay so. okay so for the perfect we've got a few things here should i clear the decks 
or, or do we want to just keep yeah, maybe set those over to the side. Right. We, we, don't worry, we'll finish these later. <laughs> Absolutely not a problem. So um, this is the rye that we've talked about before, the Sazerac. It's a it's a lovely rye whiskey. If you're if you're interested in trying a rye, this is actually the first rye that we have tried. So we've really enjoyed it. And then for our vermouths, we just went with Martini and Rossi. So that's an extra dry. And then the Rosso, uh, both of those. And one, then one of the things we did find about the vermouth, though, is mm -hmm. basically the sweet vermouth is just red. That's, so that's how they describe them. So because we spent quite a long time looking for a sweet and none of them actually say sweet. He's and, not wrong. And, we did. and so we actually had to like get online and look it up. Well, well it's fortunate we had a handheld web device at, at the store. And it turns out, yes, that just anything that's a red or Russo is, is considered a uh, sweet vermouth. So just a little side note on something I actually could, could add. If you can find these cherries, buy them and enjoy them. These Luxardo cherries are uh, amazing. Now, the very first thing we wanted to do was use these, but we didn't because I couldn't find them. Same liquor store, we found them. So super excited. They're lovely. And um, I hope that if you can find them, you try them because they're delicious. And, and if you have trouble finding them in your area, go ahead and just schedule a trip. Come to Kansas. Let us know. <laughs> we'll go ahead and take you over to where we can get them and we'll uh, make you a few cocktails too. There you go. Okay. So for the perfect, which we've got here, I've got, we're going to do this is going to be in a shaker. So you're going to have your shaker. And we're going to use two and a half ounces of the rye whiskey. And it's important to pre-chill the glass, right? You do want to pre-chill the glass. Yeah, we have we have done the prep work, so the glass is pre-pre-pre-chilled before we used it. Right. Yeah. So there's a there's going to be two and a half shots. Now we got these handy little uh, measuring uh, shot set from Amazon. I'll probably put a link on that. Yeah. It was like it was like a set of uh, four of those that have two sides on each of the graduated scale and they were like eight bucks. They're really great because they are in half ounces. So that was two and a half shots of the rye whiskey. You can use bourbon for this, but all of the things that I read said that you really do want to go ahead and use rye whiskey. It'll give it a much better flavor. And so then we are going to use half a shot of the sweet vermouth. And I'll just be supportive by making sure that I continue to drink the other ones. <laughs> and then we're going to take uh, well, half a shot. I, I'm starting to get, I can see where this would be good uh -huh. on a night where you may not want a dark and stormy. But I will say this, since we've done the dark and stormy, um, I don't, did we, did we update anybody on that? We actually uh, ended up finally getting the Gosling's uh, ginger beer. Ginger beer. Mm -hmm. It is a much different experience than using the Fever Tree uh, ginger beer. Fever Tree ginger beer is very good. We really enjoyed it. But when you actually do a uh, Gosling's Black Seal rum and the Gosling's ginger beer, oh, man, it's super tasty. Those are going to be those aromatic bitters that we're going to use. We're going to use uh, two to three dashes of those. All right. And so then with that, we are going to give it a solid stir for 30 to 45 seconds. Now, now is there, ice in it? there is ice in it, so you're going to want to stir it in a in a shaker with some ice cubes, and they suggest filling it up about halfway full, and then you want to pre-chill your glass, which we also did, and once you've done that, I know that probably wasn't 30 to 45 seconds, which, oh yeah, it'll be fine, and uh, then... But through the miracle of camera work, you can show them. <laughs> In a minute. <laughs> so then we'll, then you just pour it out. You strain it through and you pour it out. Now, is this one finished with the maraschino cherry? And we are, I, you can, so since this is the perfect and it has the dry and the sweet vermouth in it, you can finish it with the maraschino cherry or a lemon peel. But well, I'm here to tell you, since I love these maraschino cherries, we're going to finish it with a maraschino cherry. Can we try So both? you can't, you can't really see very well, but if you can just get a flavor for the loveliness of this cherry. It's a very dark cherry. The syrup, you actually use it in um, in the sweet. Instead of uh, using any of the lemon peel, you use a, a, the juice from the cherry. It's really wonderful. I, I feel like I've probably gone on enough, but they're amazing. They taste I, amazing. You know, they might actually get the impression you like these cherries. It, they might. It's, it's hard to tell. Well, you want to tell us a little more about the cherry? Well. No, she's, it's okay. <laughs> They do have my favorite thing, which is no high fructose, high fructose corn, corn syrup. syrup. Yeah, we really try yeah. to avoid that. And and the one thing that we, we would say is we've discovered that it's always worth spending a little bit extra to get the better ingredients. 
Um, we're, you don't always have to go like the really high end. I mean, there's a rye whiskey that when we looked at, it was like $185 a bottle. That's that's not really a casual drinking whiskey for most of us. Especially if you've never had a rye whiskey. Right. So, but uh, the one that we did get, uh, the, uh, the Sazerac. Sazerac's was um, the, the guy at the liquor store was actually surprised that they were, they had it in because he's like, they don't get it all the time. Uh, he's like, and, and it's a really good whiskey at a medium range price. And so we're, we've been really impressed with that. So, but we do find, especially on the cherries, they're, you got a little sticker shock at a $16 bottle of cherries. But man, are but they, man, are they good. <laughs> and, and they don't go bad. So, you yeah. know, you're, and you're only using one at a time. So, so our, our recommendation is go ahead and put a little bit of extra quality in your drinks and you won't be surprised. 1821. And actually, here's a little bit of interesting. Okay, these were not actually bottled in 1821. I think these are newer than that. So actually, a little bit of interesting history about the Luxardo cherry. It, it was a family and um, they had to flee. Uh, with the war, they had to flee. And so um, a family member took some of the, the starts of the trees and took those starts with them and moved to another place and started growing these these cherries again. So um, it's actually kind of an interesting history as well. But I didn't I didn't write all of that down, but it was really interesting to read. But it. you can't do so. your own research. It's, it's acceptable. So this probably has been one of my more fun ones. I, I say that about all of them, but it was kind of fun to do the, no, we did the not research. Say that about the, uh, the, to be fair, we didn't say that about the sidecar. Yeah, it was but, terrible. We, we've hence we've it's been terrible. told that if we actually put simple syrup in it, it might help. Yep. We think anything could help. Yep. Because, but anyway, let me digress. Sorry. So, 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 so this the magic is, of television. So this is a perfect. We just, uh, you'll see it. And you can actually, if we, um, so if you bring that uh, dry one over here, you can see that it does have a little different color than the dry. So the dry is with the lemon juice. And the, and the, the or the with the dry and the lemon peel. And then, and the sweet has a little mm -hmm, darker color. Mm -hmm. Yes, because it has the splash of maraschino syrup in it. Right. So, okay. All right. And with that, I think. Now, now, have them blink and we'll make another one appear. <laughs> oh, yes. If you blink, we'll make another one appear. Okay. Everybody ready? Close one, your eyes. One, two, three. The magic Yay, of. The magic the, of. Interwebs. Free live Facebook. Sure. <laughs> All right. So these are both perfect. So we are actually going to taste these. I guess that would be kind of a silly thing for to us see to... which one you want. No. Okay. Kind of silly for us to make it and then not taste it. All right. Oh man, I I, I can see why they call it a perfect. Wow. It, it really does blend. It does. Both the two yeah. into one. Yeah. Um, Dang, that is going to be rough, man. Yeah. It's going to be okay. I can see what's going to happen. Is there going to be certain when we want a little bit lighter and breezier? It's going to be a dark and stormy night mm -hmm. when we're like going to read a detective novel or something with Sherlock Holmes sure. in it or, or watch a pretty mystery show. Probably a Manhattan. <laughs> Probably so. Probably so. so. Well, we hope that you've enjoyed this episode of Tiny Sustainable Life's Cocktail of the Month. Sorry for the lateness. lateness of the video this month. But next month, we'll be back with another kind of fun summer. It's someone's birthday month. So we wanted to do something a little fun because, as you know, he's a Jimmy Buffett guy. So we'll be although, taking although a... This is actually Sasquatch. So. It's, it's true. He yeah. likes Sasquatch, too. But he's a Jimmy Buffett guy. So oh, we're... Oh, oh. What happened? I don't know. <laughs> well, I moved the mouse and everybody went away. It was very odd. <laughs> so, so we'll be doing something with a little summer flair. We hope that you've enjoyed this episode. Thanks so much. And, and no matter what happens, sometime in June, we will do a, a uh, boat drink. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Be because... We'll we'll go into the history of that when we have it, but but it'll it, it'll it probably won't be our month long, no. but it'll be a one off because because we they're, got they're we got tasty. we got to do it. So happy cocktailing and drink responsibly. Cheers. Cheers.